Okay, so this is going to be a follow-up to the previous video where I showed the homemade radio receiver built with the homemade triodes I've been making. It's also going to be about uh, a little companion voice transmitter I've made to go along with this. So what I've done for this is I've just built the radio on some copper clad board. It's not the prettiest thing, but it is mechanically stable and the parts aren't going anywhere. I have wired it all with bare copper wire because I think it looks looks better than the PVC insulation that's on the wire I have. And I have the tube supported on wooden blocks. This is still a regenerative receiver like in the last video. This is the regenerative stage and then these two are just audio amplifiers. And this one actually drives the speaker. I was still having issues with audio volume on the output of it so I added an interstage transformer with a 2 to 1 with a 2 to 1 ratio just to get some more voltage gain. And I also switched from a regular coil, like I think this, this was the one that was in there, and I've moved to a loop antenna. And I have the feedback coil just right here so I can move it around to get the proper regeneration point. So I think first I'll just show it uh, picking up regular uh, radio stations and then I'll hook up this transmitter and you can hear it transmitting some voice. So here's what it looks like when it's all lit up. It's rather bright so you can't really see much of anything. And if we turn up the filament for the first stage, we should be able to hear something. Okay, so as you can see, it's not the most stable thing in the world, but it does sort of work. 
So I think now I'm going to hook it up and try to try to have it receive the signal from this little transmitter. Okay, so I have this small transmitter set up in another room. It has a very short antenna and it is putting out much less than 100 milliwatts, so it it, it is complying with the Part 15 regulations for small transmitters like this. And the way that this is hooked up is that it is a carbon microphone hooked up to part of the coil for the grid feedback. And basically what this does is it just modulates the amount of feedback that the tube gets from the tank coil and modulates the output that way. So I have it connected to the oscilloscope. So if we turn it on, we should be able to see something. Du, du, du. One, two, three, four. So it is modulating. And it has a frequency of about, uh, I think, 1,200 kilohertz. It's just a, it's a dead spot uh, in my local AM dial. So I think now I'm going to try to have the receiver running in the other room. And I'm going to have this running in this room and talk into here and try to see if we can hear it in the other room. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, let's hope that worked, because I really don't like leaving this thing on out of, outside of the room. Okay, so I'm now going to go through an explanation on how both of these work. I already explained how this worked in a previous video, so I'm just going to do a brief explanation here. So here's the schematic. You can hear, see here's the first stage. This is the regenerative receiver. This is the big loop antenna in sort of a cross shape. Then here's the tuning capacitor. And here's a grid leak and a bypass RF capacitor. You can see that right there. Well, sort of. And then the plate goes through the feedback coil, which is this. And that gives you the positive feedback for the regeneration. And then here's an RF bypass capacitor, an RF choke, and then right here is the audio line. Uh, here is a Basically, it's a small transformer that I'm using as a choke just to give me some more audio volume. And then here's a coarse uh, gain pod. It sort of sets the operating point of this whole circuit. And then here's basically just a two-stage audio amplifier after that. Uh, 0.12 mega ohm grid bias resistor. And then uh, audio transformer, uh, 2 to 1. And then there's a 100K to kind of set the point at which the tube operates. It might not want to see the relatively low impedance of this transformer. It might need a little extra resistance. 
and output of this is connected to ground and then I kind of want to isolate it from the grid circuitry so I used a coupling capacitor and another 1.2 mega ohm resistor there and then this just uh, drives the audio output transformer which drives the speaker uh, I was having difficulty gaining the correct audio gain as I've said and I actually made another tube to replace the previous one that was here that had uh, gone to air and the tube I made for that first one didn't have the right amount of gain so this is the third tube in the second amplifier spot and then audio output these two have about 6 volt filaments and then this one has a 12 volt one uh, but these are yeah, you run them about four or five volts, and then this one runs about eight. So moving on to the transmitter. This is basically just a feedback oscillator. It's basically sort of like this, but just optimized to be a oscillator. There's the feedback coil and the tank coil. This is the plate coil, which is this one. This is the grid coil. This one. So the grid coil goes to the B+, plus, goes to the plate, and then has a 360 picofarad capacitor going to ground, a variable to set your frequency. Uh, I didn't want to put this directly across the coil because then uh, it'd be live. This entire case of the capacitor would be live at the 300 volts. And then we have another grid leak resistor and coupling capacitor. And just RF bypass. And then the carbon microphone shunts out a portion of the feedback. can see that there's this copper tap going right here which goes to the microphone and the same thing for the antenna you can kind of use this coil as an antenna tuner and then I just have a tap going out but this this doesn't really matter the position you put it because I'm using such a short antenna there's no way that it's resident whatsoever with the low frequency so it doesn't really matter where you put it and then the tube itself this also uses a 12 volt filament but I run it at about 8 volts and right there is the grid leak resistor and the coupling capacitor for the grid and then here's a filament rheostat so that is about it I have more tubes planned to be made in the future ordered a bunch more tungsten wire and hopefully we'll have more projects like this in the future Thank you very much for watching.